first of all, I want to say thank you to the community for re-electing John Mercurio and me to the board. Bringing back experienced uh, board members is of great value to our board. Congratulations to David Evans, our newest board member. He'll be sworn in in January in our first meeting. And I also want to say a very heartfelt thank you to Jean Staubach, who has served for 20 years and has decided to retire after this cycle. Jean has been extremely valuable to the board. She's brought great problem solving, commitment, passion, and she will be very uh, sorely missed, but we wish her good luck in her future endeavors. I'm happy to report that the teachers have ratified the new contract. The Board of Education unanimously voted to approve it. I want to reiterate how important it is to the board that we have excellent teachers and how much we value them and the work that they do every day for our students. This agreement allows us to continue the excellent academic support that we have, but at the same time honor the commitment that we've made to our taxpayers to control our spending. As you may know, the district has embarked on a master facilities planning process. This is a little different in that we're taking a very long range and broad look at how our facilities meet the needs of our students and our staff for the, for the future. The work is broken up into three phases. The first phase was a deep dive into the status of our facilities as they exist right now. We completed that this summer and we're taking some of the more immediate needs under advisement. The second phase of this process is educational vis visioning and this involves us taking a look at how the facilities actually will meet the needs of our students for the next 50 years. We'll have a great deal of community engagement and this process will take somewhere between 12 and 15 months. So stay tuned, we're sure to be asking for some help with this process. The third phase is the master planning where we take all of this input and then decide on a step-by-step -step process for how to address all of the needs. The board is excited to have the district working on this because it'll help us make sure that we can serve our students for many, many years to come. Uh, the district began to collect funds from the November 2016 levy this past January. We want to follow up on the promises we made on the use of those levy funds. You may recall that the district has utilized financial goals to make sure that we follow through on accountability of use of your dollars along with balancing that to maintain academic excellence. We promised that we would not come back for an additional operating levy for at least five years. I'm happy to report that by utilizing our financial goals, we have a great start to meeting that promise. As you can see in our financial parameters chart, our expenses only went up by about one half of 1% in the 2016-17 school year. So we feel great about being able to meet that goal. As we promised, our tax rate remains lower than most, most other school districts in Hamilton County and our neighboring districts in Warren County. In fact, we rank 20th out of 25 districts in this comparison group. Our community's continued support remains more important than ever, as the state legislature and our governor were not able to provide the support that we think we deserve in Sycamore. This past summer, we saw the results of their every two-year state budget process. Unfortunately, as we communicated to you during the levy campaign and ongoing over the last several years, the state is continuing to phase out the TPP reimbursement funds from the district. While we're going to continue to receive the same per pupil funding that we've received in the past, we are still going to be on schedule over the next five years to lose our TPP reimbursement, about $9 million out of our budget. This year, the 2017-18 school year, we are slated to receive $3 million less than we did last year, and that goes up by another million for a total of $4 million lost in our 2018-19 school year. Without your support, we would be making drastic cuts in our district, and for that we thank you for being able to continue our excellence here in Sycamore. Our discussions with our state legislators have not stopped. We've talked to them several times since the end of this budget process, and they continue to show support for the Sycamore schools. We continue to reach out with, to them and will continue our discussions, making them well aware that this, is not, this process is not over, that they need to keep in mind the needs of Sycamore schools as they represent us in Columbus. We also want to bring you up to speed on a topic of interest for you regarding your property values. This past summer, you may have received notification from the Hamilton County Auditor that they are doing a property reappraisal for the entire Hamilton County region. Every six years, the Hamilton County Auditor is 
uh, by law required to review and reappraise values for every property in Hamilton County. This reappraisal is not a way to increase your taxes. As noted by the county auditor, once this reappraisal is complete, they'll reset millage rates throughout Hamilton County to make sure that taxing entities don't receive any more taxes than what the voters originally approved. Again, we'll provide more information once we have the results from the Hamilton County Auditor's Office. Hello, my name is Frank Forstoff, and I'm proud superintendent of Sycamore Community Schools, and I'd like to welcome you to the State of the District Address. Our mission clearly states that we will need to do all that we can to have each of our students reach their full potential. One measure of that full potential is ensuring that our students make meaningful academic progress from year to year, from day to day. Last year's state local report card, although one snapshot of a student's achievement and progress, indicates that our students are progressing at an incredibly high rate. Another measure of progress, and one we put much credence in, is our measures of academic progress, or MAP testing. This testing, which is done three times a year for students in grade one through eight in math and reading, measures their progress on the content standards that we are delivering in our classroom. In all of our measures in all of our schools and all of our classroom, our actual growth of our students far exceeds the projected growth of our students. We recently recognized 16 national merit semifinalists in Sycamore High School. This measure indicates that those 16 great students were in the top 1% of the nation students who took the PSAT test last fall. In addition, we recognized 18 national commended students. And these students then would be placed in the top 3% of roughly 1.6 million high school students on the same measure in the United States. Our class of 2017 achieved, achieved a composite score of 25.9 on the ACT College entrance examination. This is four points higher than the state of Ohio average and five points higher than the national average. And I'm pleased to announce that four of our students achieved a perfect ACT score and one of our students not only achieved a perfect ACT score but achieved a perfect SAT score as well. So evidence again that our students are achieving at a really high level compared to both state and national averages. Our teachers are collaborating together to develop short assessments which are administered to students to monitor their progress on attainment of the content standards. Our teachers then analyze that data to determine how to intervene or enrich students by individuals. So as we prepare our students to be college or career ready, we continually look for ways that we can enhance our innovative program. One such way is the development of our STEAM five-year program. This great group of STEAM teachers help develop what I'm standing right in the middle of now, our aviation station. This mobile classroom is designed to fuel the passions of our students in STEAM activities and provide opportunities for them to demonstrate their creativity and to utilize the design process. Do you like that? What are you doing? Just make it. Okay, I'm here with some great EH Green fifth graders who are working on uh, a Lego project. And a Lego is something that many of us use when we no, were you kids, but you're using this kind of in a different way. So right now we're trying to design, so where we will flip it over and then we'll put the, we'll put the weight, and we'll put the timer inside it, and then we'll put the cup of weights on top of it. Yeah. So it's kind of like a bridge design. Okay. Good, good. And does your design work every time the first time? No. And why is that important? So if it fails and we can see what's going wrong, we can try again. I'm here with Mr. Sandor, a science teacher at EH Green, and as you can hear, we have lots of creativity going on behind us with our students. So Mr. Sandor, you've spent a lot of time helping put this ADA What do you see as the benefit for our students? Um, it's really a chance for them to work on those 21st century skills, collaboration, revision, persistence. Uh, you know, it's great to have them prepared for a test and understand the content, but without those skills to communicate what they know, that's not very useful. So we want them to be you know, great public speakers, great collaborators, you know, work together, persist through difficult problems, and you know, revise, 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 and always work on the What are you hearing from your students about how they like? 
like this. Exactly what we're hearing now. They love it. They, they're excited. They, the classroom is noisy, which I love because you know it means they're actively engaged and they're collaborating. Uh, they're thrilled and excited when they see you know the aviation station parked out front in the morning. So it means they're going to do something fun. Yeah. One of our overarching goals was to kind of fuel passion of our students with STEAM. Do you see some of that evolving? Oh, absolutely. Um, I know I have some students that are really excited about going to a STEM-related dinner in a couple of weeks that uh, is hosted by a community partner, iSpace. And you know, I had students asking, like, how do I sign up? How do I go? I'm going to hear about you know girls in STEM education and you know future jobs in engineering. And you know, students are looking for things outside of the classroom to because. They remain engaged in it. What have you seen as the benefit of, the, of this aviation station? What are some things that you've learned? Well, I think this facility here kind of helps us work together. Work together and communicate better. Keep going, try again. Testing new ideas. Testing, great. Testing new ideas. Awesome. You think this is a pretty cool thing? Uh, absolutely. I've had the pleasure of actually serving as an after school tutor and homework helper on the aviation station. And what I've noticed uh, from our students that come onto the aviation station is an absolute love of being able to get some guidance on some of those needed skills that they need in their classroom. Uh, the smiles that they have on their face as they work with adults to help them through their homework is something that I will never forget. We're also increasing our ways that we can engage with our residents who do not have students in our schools. Recently, in September, our elementary schools hosted Grandparents Day, and we had thousands of grandparents special friends and parents in our building experience what life is in our elementary schools. We also hosted our first ever senior connection activity at Sycamore High School. This was an opportunity for us to invite some of our senior citizens into our Sycamore High School and they had an opportunity to really experience what life at the high school is all about. We will continue to examine ways that we can engage with very important parts of our Sycamore community as we welcome them into our Sycamore family. As superintendent on behalf of the Board of Education, please know we are very grateful for the resources that our community has blessed us with. We take very seriously our responsibility to be good fiscal stewards while maintaining the excellence of Sycamore schools. We know full well that a strong school system and vibrant communities are so closely connected and you have my commitment as superintendent to do everything within my power to ensure that Sycamore community schools remain incredibly strong and one of the best school districts in the state of Ohio. We welcome your feedback and we truly appreciate your investment and involvement in our schools and I believe working together we can continue to make Sycamore schools Sycamore strong. Do you have questions about any of the topics discussed in the state of the district? Join our live Twitter chat on November 16th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. using the hashtag AChat.